Hello and good evening, friends and family. So listen, it's Saturday. I've had a lot of questions about what's going on with me. Uh, I am completely open to sharing that. And I'm at the point now where I'm gonna share it because there's a lot the media doesn't tell you. There's a lot that a lot of people don't tell you because they don't know. They throw out a lot of terms that are incorrect. So I'm not a doctor. I am not a professional in any way in the medical field. But what I do know is that I know myself, I know the lab results, I know the doctors, phenomenal doctors I've been dealing with for the past year. So you can fact check me if you want and you're gonna, you're gonna see that's fact. I'm not gonna say anything that's not real. So I got COVID September 26, 2020. Okay, we're gonna start with that. And I was extremely ill. I had a fever of 103, 104 for 11 days straight. Every symptom you can possibly imagine. I went to the ER on the 12th day. So that being said, uh, I never fully recovered from then. And I just figured that was, hey, you know, people say COVID's gonna take a long time to recover from it. Uh, you're gonna feel fatigue, right? So, I was, you know, COVID is fairly new, September, given the time frame, 2020. So several months passed by. I thought I felt normal. Did I? No, I didn't. Uh, kind of lack of energy. So I'm gonna fast forward here we are here now in September of 2021. It has been one year, just about one year, and I am still struggling. So many of you have either confronted me in a way uh, that I don't like, saying that you look fine, everything's great. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not. So after this video, you can continue to watch it if you want. This is not a debate. Uh, this is not anything with politics. This is fact, all right? So first and foremost, up front, I am a rare case, okay? So the term long hauler that gets thrown out, take that with a grain of salt because there's a lot of studies that go around with the, that go around with the term long hauler, which is not an actual medical term. It's just long hauler because they have nothing else to say other than, hey, this person's had symptoms for a long time. So September 26, 2020, here we are September, it's been about a year. Since then, I have probably had about 10 or 11 PCR tests. A PCR test is a nose swab, the most accurate COVID test you can take an active COVID test, which means if you test positive, you are contagious without a doubt, right? Um, kids typically asymptomatic, and I say typically because it varies case by case. Again, I'm not gonna say anything that's not factual. Adults usually show symptoms. Some are mild, some are extreme. Mine was the extreme, I was contagious. Some are mild, they're still contagious. So what I'm dealing with, and I am not nervous to share this, because I've had too many questions and uh, I feel like it's just good for people to understand this. And uh, this will be on YouTube because there's just, there's not enough data out there. Like this is so new and then the new variants. So I have a whiteboard and I'm gonna draw some stuff out. So to get a couple terms out of the way, when you get anybody testing, right? Just because you test positive for anybody does not mean that you are immune or you've built an immunity up to COVID and you can't catch it again. That's false. People have got it again and it's gotten really bad. Um, I'm gonna talk about people dying from the vaccination. There's too many unknowns on that. And that goes to my specific situation here. So when you catch COVID, your body, turn around, let's draw a little chart here. I've drawn this for a couple of people so they understand. So let's just say, day zero, you caught COVID, right? There's no symptoms at this point. Your body's just still trying to figure out what's going on. So the very first thing, right? We're gonna put one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Let's just put six months, 12 months, okay? There are two types of antibodies when you get tested. It is called SARS-CoV-2. It's a specific test for an antibody. Not IgA, not IgM, not IgG for the rest of your immune system, but specific to COVID. Make sure this is center. So, all right. So the initial onset, when you catch COVID-19 and you actually got it in a contagious level, the first response your body has, it starts producing what's called an IgM antibody, right? IgM, right? M is the key number, key letter there. That's short-lived. 
I put this to the four weeks because 20 to 30 days, sometimes two months, it just depends. Not one year, right? And so this is the, the, the fastest, strongest initial reaction that your body can do to fight COVID. So after, again, this is gonna vary, but this is in general. Once your body says, okay, I've caught COVID over here, one to two weeks, your body starts producing this. So by the time you start producing this, uh, you're gonna get, uh, let's, see, let's we'll put PCR up here. PCR is a nose swab test you may get at Walgreens. Um, don't include rapid test. Rapid test is not the same as a PCR and it's not as accurate uh, unless you're showing a lot of symptoms. So PCR positive, and we're gonna put this dot right here, right? Because you're likely to test positive when you're there. So after your body has produced IgM antibodies to fight the initial, you know, the initial illness, whatever you would call it, disease, then your body starts producing what's called IgM. And I'm gonna flatline this. And I'll tell you why in a second. I'm sorry, not IgM, IgG, right? So there's M and there's G. M is short-lived. It is not supposed to live more than one or two months, which is why I just kind of put this in the middle. Initial response. This is when you're gonna feel the worst. This is when your body's fighting the hardest. That's when your immune system has put its test. Once this goes down towards the end, IgG starts getting created. And if you're still with me, I really appreciate it because this is important because this is stuff that they're not gonna tell you unless you research it yourself. And of course, because I've been dealing with this for a year, I'm a little annoyed and I'm over it. And so I did my due diligence and of course talking with an immunologist and like, again, this is all fact. So IgG is the long response antibody that your body produces after IgM has been created. And then basically it, IgG is the long term. How long? Who knows? There's not enough data out there to say how long. It could be up to 12 months, it could be six months, right? So the reason why I flatlined it is because there are patients out there that have had it for 12 months. Does this mean you're not gonna catch it again? Absolutely not. Does it mean that your body's built an immunity to it and it's gonna help? Yes, okay? So that is what happens. You catch COVID, IgM goes up, it drops, it decays extremely quickly, IgG gets created, right? So this is usually when you feel the worst. We're just gonna put this sad face because that's what they do in the hospitals. How do you feel today? All right, and over here, you're usually feeling pretty good. Now, what they don't know is that when there's a long hauler, right? They say long hauler because they have a lot of symptoms, right? This could still mean that there's, you know, IgM's gone and you know, you have IgG and you're out of this phase and you're on your way to recovery, but you still have symptoms. That is not me, okay? And there's not enough data out there to even prove that, you know, you can't produce IgG or IgM while you're still having symptoms. So long story short, here's where I am. My body, and I've had several tests throughout the months, throughout the year, I keep testing for IgM, which means that you have recently, very recently, have had the COVID disease, whatever you want to call it, uh, infection and your body's fighting it, right? First response. And then you're supposed to create this. So in February, I tested positive for both. Uh, as of three weeks ago, my body is still producing IgM antibodies as if I keep catching COVID over and over and over again. This is fact. How many people, the long haulers have tested this? The data points are unknown because Nobody's really done it. I, of course, you guys know me. Uh, I love the medical field and I love testing. And I love knowing the data, the data points, analysis, whatever you want to call it. So here I am. I am on this side. I keep testing negative for PCR, which means I am not contagious. My body does not have an active COVID state to where I could get anybody else sick. I am sick internally. I feel like shit every single day. You don't see it, why? Because I take a lot of medication. So the reason why I'm sharing this is because what's happening now, and I figured it was just easier to make a video to follow along, is that my body continues to produce IgM and it's destroying my immune system and weakening it, or I guess you could say destroying, maybe, not, maybe it's an extreme word, for you nurses out there, doctors, whoever you are, but this is still fact, I don't care who you are, um, my body is in this loop of producing IgM antibodies, no longer IgG. So 
this is why I continue to feel like crap. Now I have, I'm not going to talk about the other parts of my immune system that are kind of beat down, right? Not, not in my favor to help recover, but talking to an immunologist that's some 30 years of this, and he has a lot of connections and a lot of other doctors that are extremely smart related to Tampa General Hospital, uh, Brandon Hospital, and just, you know, there's a network of immunology just in the background that we don't see. So when they come to your appointment and they talk about this stuff, they've already done their research and talked to partners. So I was told that I'm an extremely rare case that is never seen. This is very rare, right? So rare, in fact, that there is no data out there to, that even correlates at even any level to show a patient that has long hauler, right? So there are patients that have had IgM last two to three months. It has been one year. And I've had five to six tests that do IgG, IgM and IgG. And I'm positive every single time for IgM. I am negative for a PCR active COVID test. And I'm negative now for IgG. So this is where I am. This is why I continually feel like crap. My body thinks, well, whatever, whatever's going on. I can say think whatever, it's not fake. But this IgM is continuously getting reproduced over and over and over again, which is why I go through like two weeks, you know, two weeks sprints, that's <laughs> like IT term planning, but I never get here. I just keep going here and here and here and here on this side of the chart. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, my case is unknown. Um, there is uh, no solution to this. I know a lot of people I've heard, oh, take vitamins, take this and that, right? There's not a vitamin in the world that's gonna help this, okay? There's no vitamins that's gonna help this, I'm sorry. You can try to do this and boost your immune system, but this right here, this is at a different level, okay? And so for all of you, um, I do feel like shit every single day. I wake up and my best times are 11 or 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. I have sniffles, yes, but by one o'clock, I have my sinus burns, my eyes hurt, I get a headache, I feel extremely tired, I am anemic, that doesn't help either, and it's just a repetitive process, and by five or six o'clock p.m., I have chills. I have chills, it's cold, the house can be 77, 78, I'm freezing, and then it goes through that phase, and then by seven or eight o'clock, it kind of dwindles down, I eat dinner, I have a couple beers, and I just go to bed. Right, because the thing that I look forward to the most is going to sleep knowing that the next morning is gonna be great again. Uh, so there is no resolution to where I'm at because there's nothing out there that even supports what my doctor, who's been doing this for 30 years and his partner for 30 years and his whole network of immunologists. Right, we're not even at hematology yet. So you Google it all you want. YouTube, IgM versus IgG antibodies specific to COVID your body produces other things that are IgG, IgM, but this is SARS-CoV-2 antibody testing. So when you get a vaccination, you may have an IG, IgM spike and then it goes to IgG, right? But that's not 100% proven. Some people don't spike at all. Um, I'm not against a vaccination, but to cut this video down because it's 13 minutes and 37 seconds, I'm not allowed to get the vaccination because it could kill me, right? I'm not lying. So when you hear these people that say, oh, they got, got the vaccination, I don't trust it, uh, they died from it. Well, the first thing I would say is, uh, did they have a full serology, immunology test, whatever you wanna call it, uh, to, to get a snapshot of how their immune system is? Because at this point, my body can overreact to a vaccination and be the death of me. Fact, um, monoclonal antibody treatments, was looking forward to that because I've heard such amazing things about it and that was supposed to be one of the things we were gonna address. But because of my current state of health, I am not, no longer allowed to get that. I am disqualified. Uh, disqualified because of the fact of my current state and where I am. So they're, they're locking, you know, they're, they're tightening up on the restrictions of who can get it, um, you know, based on their current health. So where am I going with this video? So now I am getting submitted to research organizations, facilities, I don't know. I, I just said, look, I, I don't care at this point, I'm desperate, it's been a year. Um, I'm still dealing with COVID at some level that nobody knows about. And so USF, John Hopkins, that's all in the works at this point. So I just wanted to give everybody an update because there's just so many unknowns and because 
my specific case is extremely rare, there is a great possibility that the people that are long haulers are dealing with the same thing. It's just that there's not enough data out there that even shows that they're doing the testing I'm doing. I'm pretty adamant about this because I'm sick and tired of feeling like crap and I just want my life back. Um, as you guys know, I go through different mood swings and changes. One day I may be good, next day it's like, hey, I'm super tired. And I just drink energy drinks and caffeine just to, just to supplement that, to show happiness and have fun or do whatever. But um, the face of this may seem fine. Internally, no, I'm not. I am always in discomfort all day, every day, and I take a lot of meds to suppress it. So is COVID real? This is probably what, this, is, this would be part two of a video where I said I caught COVID twice. Um, I, my, so I might as well say like my body thinks it caught COVID at least 15 times over the course of the year. Um, so that's what's happening. Uh, is COVID real? Yes. Would I mask? Yeah. You know, it's just, the immunologist told me this. He said, unless everybody gets the vaccination all at the same time, this is never gonna go away. Why? Because as life has it, as each person catches an infection and disease, a virus, um, as it goes on over time, the body morphs that thing into a different strand, a different version of it, which is why you always get these variants. Just like the flu, I'll get a flu shot. Oh, you got the flu, but it was a different strand that wasn't covered in this vaccination. I'm not going down that route of all the information he told me. I'm just letting you guys know that, listen, uh, the COVID stuff's very real. Uh, some people have lost family members, close friends. Some people have not. Um, lately, um, on my side of the family, there has just been too many. Uh, there's you know, people on an ICU that are on ventilators. And typically, once you're in the ICU on a ventilator, your chances of living are slim to none because organs start shutting down, your brain's not getting enough oxygen, and well, that happens. So uh, I am highly susceptible to getting sick. So if I wear a mask around you, it is not because I don't want you to catch something. It's because I can catch something and go south extremely quick. So that's all I wanted to share because there's a, lot of, there's a lot of information that's not passed down to the media. They just, oh, somebody died from a vaccine or, oh, they're doing this, that, Moderna, Pfizer, booster shots, right? I, I know about the information about that now. I'm not sharing that here. I'm not here for a debate of vaccinators versus non-vaccinators. At first I was against it. Now I'm okay with it, but I'm not allowed to have it because of the current state that I'm in. So for all of you that have stuck around for 17 minutes so far, I really appreciate it. Um, but that's what's going on with me. Um, I am ill. My immune system, uh, there are parts of it that are gone that are not ever going to come back. Uh, could have been born with some of them. Um, but then there are a lot that just kind of checked out and said, hey, we're just not going to help you out. So uh, if you see me happy one day and you see me sad the next, just understand that uh, don't take it personal if I have a mood change or a swing because you can only sustain so much of this shit over a year before you start losing your mind. And that's where I'm at. So this is not a drunk video. This is literally to show you that there is some pretty wild shit out there and I'm in a rare, I'm an extremely rare case that is just not seen. So yes, I am being submitted for research. So hopefully two dudes don't show up in biohazard suits trying to take me away and then they like, you never see me again. But if you do, and I'm in a video, if I blink twice, that means I'm in distress and they're trying to poke and prod me in ways I don't want to be prod. So anyways, thank you so much for watching this. I really hope it helped just kind of enlighten you on some things. Um, if you're having long hauler symptoms, please go to your doctor, go to immunologist, get checked, get your full lab done. That just did a whole serology testing, um, pathology, it's just everything, everything you can possibly test, you know, to see where your immune system's at uh, before you get vaccinated and before you just, you know, so you have a game plan, right? It's just, you always have to assess where you're at now to see what the best path is, uh, you know, for your future medications. So again, I really hope that you guys stay safe and don't catch COVID. And if you do, I really hope you made a full recovery. Um, and until next time, I'll keep you updated. So love you guys. I really appreciate you watching this. Take care.